Well, if you bought a vehicle in the past five years, congratulations. There's probably a non-zero chance it came pre-seasoned with metal shavings in the engine. Apparently that's a new feature. We're not talking about a couple bad engines anymore. We're talking about millions of bad engines. GM has 720,000 engines under recall for the 6.2 liter, and they have another 280,000 under investigation. Then we've got Toyota here. They had 102,000 under the initial recall, another 127,000 recalled just recently, and that's not even including the hybrids. They're not even recalling all of these engines that are problematic. Honda had over 250,000 of their 3.5 liter V6 engines recalled, rod bearing failures, and this is unprecedented for a company like Honda, and now 1.4 million are under investigation. And we can go all the way back to 2017, Hyundai Kia recalled 1.5 million. I mean, this has been going on for just about a decade now. So in this video, I'm going to try to answer why is this happening with all of the manufacturers, almost all of them, in modern engines? I think we have some details that actually might shed some light on this. In fact, this problem is becoming so widespread that Automotive News, which is a publication that's kind of like more favorable to the manufacturers, EPA and all those things, at least that's my take on them. They actually wrote this article on December 2nd, Power Failure, What's Causing Massive Engine Recalls? And I thought this article was cool to share with you guys because Dave from Dave's Auto Center, you guys probably watch his YouTube channel as well. He was interviewed in this and gave his thoughts on why he thinks this is occurring in all of these different engines. That's a brand new GM there, by the way, a 6.2 liter. That job takes 18 hours, and I think the crate engine's about ten dollars to $12,000 on that. Pretty cheap for these manufacturers to be making these mistakes. Oh, I'd love to get your guys' thoughts on this because there's a lot of things that contribute to this. Here's what the article starts out with. The automotive industry's decade-long push for cleaner, more fuel-efficient engines has created unintended consequences, which is what a lot of you guys have said in the comments and on all these channels is that, hey, these EPA CAFE regulations, they might not necessarily mandate the way a manufacturer does something, but the mile per gallon mandate or guidelines, if you want to call them that, they force manufacturers to do things that end up making unreliable engines in the end. And we're going to go through that. They say that Automotive News asked engine engineers and other experts what is causing these failures. The consensus was that today's engines are delivering record amounts of power per liter and running hotter temperatures and are creating higher in-cylinder pressures. All of those come from turbocharged engines, smaller displacement, and then of course pushing much higher horsepower and torque through much smaller engines with less surface area to take that torque, like less bearing surface area. Sort of along the same mile per gallon desire that these manufacturers have, they reduce parasitic losses created by the engine's internal spinning parts because they make thinner and thinner oils. So the thinner oil and tighter tolerances, it says the higher stress on bearings, rods, crankshafts, and other parts combined with thinner oil means the engine's components have to be machined, cleaned, and assembled perfectly. And when they are not, engines can seize. They ask Greg Davis, he's a university professor at Flint, Michigan School's Advanced Engine Research Lab. He said, in the push to minimize exhaust emissions and improve fuel economy, automakers have had to aggressively downsize engines while trying to maintain the performance that drivers expect. That's another thing, right? You have the race for power. Who can tow the fastest? Who can do the best quarter mile? So you're trying to retain all that power you had in like a V8 or the supercharged V8s and sticking it in half the displacement of engine. And he goes on to say, this has led to higher operating peak pressures and greater average engine loads. Those both increase bearing loads and engine wear. They also interviewed Tom Howell. He does powertrain testing for some of the automakers through an Austria-based company. He said he believes thinner oils, tighter tolerances, and harder bearing materials are contributing to the industry's engine problems. So let's think about that for a minute. We've got the engine crankshaft, the rod bearings, the journals, all of it separated by less than a human hair's width. And we're running 0W20, 0W16 oil now, 0W8 oil in some of these newer cars. 
And we're expecting that to protect everything just like the old 5W30 or 540 or 040 oil used to protect. And why? Because these manufacturers want every last fraction of a mile per gallon they can get out of these because that's what they were being fined for. So when they're running these thin oils, what do you have to do? You have to shrink the tolerances because the oil is thinner. So you shrink the oil and you tighten the clearance. And when you tighten clearances, you must have absolutely perfect machining. You have to have perfect bearing surfaces, perfect crankshaft hardening and polishing, and they have to be in the like perfect diameter. And you pretty much have to have perfect cleaning of all the large and microscopic debris in these engines, which isn't happening, the swarp. And that's where Dave comes in. They got his opinion on this as well. And I'd love to see what you guys think about this, if you agree with this or not. He says, swarf is perhaps the most important and difficult contaminant an engine builder has to deal with after all the machining work is done in the block and other parts like the crankshaft and cams. He goes on to say, the big stuff, meaning the machining chips you can see with your eyes are obvious and the easiest to deal with. The swarf, like the really small microscopic stuff, is what will bite you in the butt and ruin your build. He said, usually this includes includes honing swarf rather than chips. Dave said the honing swarfs comes from the tool being used to finish the surface of the cylinder bores, the metal being removed and the coolant used to lubricate the hone. When these three combine, you basically get something that resembles concrete. It's brittle, abrasive, and dangerous. You can imagine if that gets in between the bearings somewhere, it's just gonna shred them. Once it breaks loose and circulates through the engine, it causes extreme wear that will eventually lead to catastrophic failure. Then they kind of go on to say, you know, like Dave and his crew build one engine at a time and by hand, and they spend a considerable amount of time cleaning and cleansing the parts where GM and other manufacturers are doing like a thousand engines per day. So obviously it's a little bit more difficult at mass scale, but here's the thing. So they, they start out talking about how thinner oils could cause this. And, and while I agree to a certain extent, I still think that, you know, if cars like this, this, this Toyota Tundra can have a 5.7 liter zero W 20 oil is spec in these. And this is what a lot of these guys run zero W 20 and they can get a million miles out of that 5.7 liter. I just, I struggle to think that it's all just the zero W20 and the tighter tolerances. I think there's more going on here. I think it could be a combination of all of these things. And in addition to that, start stop technology, I think is terrible for engines. I think it is playing some sort of a factor with long-term reliability. I think that's why we see some guys with 100, 150,000 miles on these trucks that are like two or three years old in their fleet vehicles because they're not doing a lot of start stop. And I think they're able to get that mileage out of them. Also the variable oil pumps. I know they've been around a little bit, but I think the variable oil pumps along with start stop technology are contributing to that initial little loss of, of oil pressure. And when you look at all of these things combined, you've got higher cylinder pressure, tighter clearances, you've got direct injection, you've got turbos, you're pushing more torque, all the tighter tolerances, the stop start cycles, thinner oil. I think all of it, a lot of these processes uh, got worse with, with COVID around 2020 and they changed manufacturers and, and you just put it all together. I think we're going to continue to see this. I don't know that it's it's going to get fixed easily. I think a lot of it did have to do with CAFE, EPA mandates. They didn't necessarily mandate that the manufacturers would build engines this way, but this is what you have to do in order to get a higher mile per gallon rating out of these engines. Bottom line is the worst part of all this, I think we're gonna see more of this, by the way, this is uh, from the Tundra Facebook group uh, last night, another Tundra with main bearing failure. I think we're gonna see more of this in the future. And there's something else that was lurking recently, the cafe changes by Trump. It actually is gonna affect trucks a lot and in a negative way. And here's why I think this is actually going to get worse. So what they're doing is they're removing the EV credit and they're removing the ability for manufacturers to use electric vehicles in their mile per gallon calculations. So before they would say a, an EV would give them 200 miles per gallon or 300 miles per gallon, and then they would get to use that to offset all of these trucks that we drive 
like my truck gets, you know, 19 miles per gallon or whatever it is. So now moving forward, all these manufacturers, in order to hit even the rolled back figure that Trump has, it's like 34 miles per gallon in 2031. In order to hit that number, now they have to hit it without electric vehicles being counted with the mile per gallon rating. Before you could totally fudge it with EVs. You could have like 10 or 15% of your fleet be EVs and then you could buy credits back and it offset your trucks. That's why they were allowed to just run all these big trucks with like V8s at 15, 20 miles per gallon or these twin turbocharged engines at 15 miles per gallon. And it doesn't matter because the EVs are offsetting that. Well, now the EVs are removed from that. The credit's gone. What manufacturers are going to have to do, they're gonna have to make everything like a hybrid powertrain. So now we're gonna see, I think, they're gonna have to reduce power a little bit reduce displacement, or they're going to have to do what? Add hybrids and batteries. So all of these trucks are gonna to have to get much more complex in order to achieve 34 miles per gallon average across the company for light duty. I think this is actually going to make the cafe, somehow make the cafe standards even worse for trucks because they're removing the EVs and they're not allowed to, to use the EVs in the calculations. I'll put links to this in the description and you guys can go read for yourself. I don't think any of these manufacturers are really going to step back from cafe standards. And they also probably believe that the Trump administration might be out, you know, if, if it swaps back and the pendulum swings back to Democrat driven politics, they're not gonna just throw away their billions of dollars of investments and all of these things. They're going to move forward with the same garbage we've always had. So I don't think this is gonna get better. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Love to hear your thoughts as always. Good, bad, and ugly. Thanks for watching.